TV.com. I'm down here at CTIA in Las Vegas, and I am joined by Perry LaForge in the CDG. How are you doing today? Doing great. Thank you. So, it's, it's only been a few weeks since we've last talked to you in Barcelona. Can you tell me what's up? <laughs> I get around, don't I? Um, <laughs> we're here today. We're, we're doing some different things relative to uh, CDMA around the world. Uh, we had uh, meetings with a number of operators in terms of what we're doing on low-cost handsets, mm -hmm. what we're doing on roaming. And uh, I'll be participating in a panel on uh, the road to 4G mm -hmm. and how CDMA works into that. Could you give me a little explanation of how CD, CDMA works into 4G? Sure. Well, you know, most of the technology out there for 3G is CDMA-based, whether it's HSDPA, uh, WCDMA, or CDMA 2000. Um, and CDMA 2000 controls, I think, about 70% of the worldwide 3G market. For 4G, most people are looking at OFDM technologies, mm -hmm. which are very different. And what we found in, in terms of working with the operators is they're looking at 4G for different applications, very different than 3G, maybe more consumerish uh, mm -hmm. CE devices, and so we're seeing that as emerging as complementary, uh, a complementary service. And essentially, that's going to be a few years out, though. I mean, we're, we're seeing you know three, four, five years out. Can you give me some examples of the, the complementary technology that you're talking about? Okay, so it's it's really going to be more broadband kind of uh, technology to consumerish devices. So it could be connectivity to set-top boxes. It could be con connectivity to cameras. It could be some machine-to-machine -machine things. Although we're starting to do machine-to-machine -machine on uh, with CDMA 2000 right now as well. So more consumerish type. Would that be like the femtocell and UMA technology, or is that? No, am, I, am I off there? Yeah, femtocells are are really being applied towards. You know, extending coverage into mm -hmm. various regions, so I wouldn't say that's necessarily the the same type thing. Okay. Um, but the, the key thing is, is 3G technologies are going to be complementary. That you know, for example, Verizon announced they're doing uh, LTE, but they also said they're going to continue to grow their core network, which is CDMA based, and they're going to continue to grow that for a number of years, because 3G is going to apply to a different market. All right. Now, 4G isn't exactly a, a defined uh, term yet. Right. Can can you give us an idea of what you think this term is going to be defined as when it when it finally does get a definition? Yeah. Well, I think it's going to be uh, OFDM-based technologies. And, and by way of background, people are using the term 4G rather loosely right mm -hmm. now. Um, the ITU ultimately defines what 3G, which they do with CDMA 2000. Um, they'll define what 4G is, and and they haven't done that yet. So. People are bannering around the word 4G rather loosely, but you know, in my estimation, it's going to be OFDM-based. Uh, Can technology. you give us a definition of OFDM? Well, it's just another, um, for the non-technical, it's just another air interface uh, that is more applicable towards uh, using broader channels than a narrower channel technology like WCDMA or CDMA 2000. But um, so 4G is going to be probably OFDM-based. But really what I think defines 4G in most cases is the data rates that they're talking about. And they'll set some peak rates of, I think, what they're talking about for these OFDM technologies is like 280 megabits per second, something like that. Excellent. Now, I do have, I do have a, rather, a rather difficult question. Now, uh, CDMA technology, right. phone technology, there's no, there's, there's no SIM card because it's different than... Well, well, it's wrong. I mean, in various parts oh, of the world, there are SIM cards. There yeah, is? so in okay. China and Indonesia and other parts of the world, they do use SIM cards. Okay. The, um, we call it RUIM, User mm -hmm. Identity Modules. Um, however, in North America here, the operators chose long ago not to use uh, SIM cards because what they wanted to do is we kind of pioneered the concept of over-the-air activation, mm -hmm. OTA. That really came out of our group. Mm -hmm. It was a term that we developed, and also we developed the technology. So they want to use more OTA. So SIM cards uh, in CDMA have a certain place, and really in, in a number of parts of the world they're being used, but not here in North America. Now, that, that's actually my one frustration with CDMA here, here in North America, is that when my phone dies, I can't put my SIM card into another phone and get at, get, get at my phone number. Now, I know that might seem like a trivial thing to, to you know, someone who, you know, a mover and shaker like you, but it's pretty important to someone like me. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, in mo most cases, what I'd say is we developed CDMA to have better battery lives, so oh. hopefully that, <laughs> that took care of that problem. But, uh, um, you know, there's other ways of doing that. Uh, you, you don't necessarily need a SIM card. You can just use a, you know, 
memory module too. So, but um, yeah, yeah, I can see where that might be a, <laughs> a situation for you. Now, um, I'm just going to switch gears. Although the GSM operators have locked their phones for a long time, so they made it kind of difficult to shift yeah. SIM cards once in a while. But Not for a girl like me, though. <laughs> <laughs> Tech savvy girl. <laughs> I'm going to switch gears just a little bit and talk yeah. about low cost handsets in Africa. Could sure. you talk about those initiatives and, and how, how you see mobile moving forward in, in third world countries? Yeah, so we just completed a conference in Africa. Um, and I got to tell you, I think we've got, by the end of the year, we'll have 80 uh, operators in, in Africa. So initially, Af the Africa region, because the licenses started off as GSM, but now it's I can say it's, it's shifting ra rather rapidly towards uh, CDMA. Um, one of the things that we've done as a group very well is to work on an initiative to push handset costs for 3G CDMA, CDMA 2000, down to really low points. So, you know, for example, in India now, I think we're seeing 80 some devices under $50. We have a number of devices, I think it's from like 20 manufacturers or something like that. Um, below $30, we have a large number of devices, and now we're seeing devices come down well below even thirty dollars. Um, so that that has a lot of applicability to markets like Africa mm -hmm. and markets like you know Indonesia and other other markets. And I think it's been a big advantage for for CDMA, and it's going to continue to be an advantage in Africa. So the operators there were thrilled about what we're doing. Um, they're all trying to get together and and get these quantities from us, and we're doing some volume aggregation as well. So. Um, uh, really, handset pricing for developing markets has been a real key uh, advantage for us. Fantastic. Now, to take a step back from tech, what do you think this really means for uh, the social development of, of Africa? Well, you know, it was interesting because I used to travel through Africa in the, in the mid-90s uh, and late-90s, and a lot of the licenses there were offered uh, to operators with the idea that they were going to bring out uh, services not only to the cities but to the broader uh, broader areas, the townships. Well, and, and this was something that was uh, part of the license it was called Universal Service Access, which was done by the regulatory bodies in, in Africa. Unfortunately, what happened is a lot of the stuff was done just for the cities because that's where all the ARPU was. Um, with 3G and CDMA 2000, with the fact that we've come down with in pricing with a, a, a 3G technology and we can provide voice and data. You know, I think there is a real promise of getting uh, not only voice, but getting data out um, to to the rural areas and townships. And there's certain advantages with uh, CDMA in terms of propagation characteristics. And depending on what frequency bands you're talking about, you can get great coverage areas. But I think all that is being looked at by the, the African operators, and that's why we you know we now have about 80 operators, and they're so much in, you know enthusiastic about what's going on. Well, fantastic, Trey. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Okay. Always a pleasure to find out what's new with you. It's good to see you, and <laughs> hope all goes well at the show. Fingers crossed. Okay. This has been Perry LaForge from the CDG, and I'm Nicole Scott with BNET2.com at CTIA in Las Vegas.